In this video, we are going to have a quick look at the Auto World Cadillacs that I did get a hold of this month. Now, I was randomly searching out a whole bunch of these cars because I really want to make a Demolition Derby uh, customization of these cars. And by chance, I ended up finding a seller who had about, oh, 13 or 14 of them for sale beige and black from the first release Auto Worlds of 2013 including the chase including the chase I mean can you believe this I was looking for this chase for so long this is still not a cheap car to get it is probably the hardest chase car to get from the first release of Auto Worlds and here it is and we are uh, we're going to have a look at some of these cars, but we're not going to be opening a chase car. We're going to open up a black and a beige car because, like I said, I intend to customize these and turn them into demolition derby cars. And uh, this has just been an amazing find for me because this is one of the best castings to do that too. Now, just a quick peek ahead to what's going to be in this video. We are going to look at these vintage Hot Wheels, which are before you. They've been promised to be looked at for three videos, or two videos now. Well, three including this one. We're going to get to these cars. We're going to do that right this video. And we're also going to look at those uh, Johnny Lightning Ford F-250s and compare it to that uh, Racing Champion Tide Ford F-250 and figure out what the heck is going on there. We're going to look at some speed machines. We're probably not going to get to the parking plates. I'm going to tell you that right now. That will be probably part four of this series. We may get to these Johnny Lightnings. I do intend to open them on camera because the packaging is just a bit too much for me and my display. So anyways, let's see if we can get all that done. We still have all of those M2s and green lights to look at. All of those parking plates. And now... Believe it or not, I've got another box. This just came in the mail today. A humongous box of M2s and green lights. And uh, that's going to be added to the mix. Probably a part four video, December haul video, looking at all those M2s, the latest and greatest stuff. So, anyways, without further ado, let's get back to those Auto World Cadillacs. Okay, looking at those Cadillacs. There's the Chase Cadillac. I won't be opening that one just because it is a Chase. And uh, I have a pretty good display for my Auto Worlds in my Hot Wheels room. They're actually somewhat of a feature. You can see there's the whole first series right there along the top bulkhead above my diorama. And I've got a few more starting to creep along the wall there, the lower part of the room. A couple there ready to go up on the wall. So, anywho, definitely going to be keeping the Chase version on the card. Got uh, all these other ones here still on the card, but I did go ahead and open up these two. So, at least we can have a look at uh, the first two non-chase color variations of this car and uh, my only issue with this car is that the hood doesn't open as much as I would like it to so I can't really get a good look at the engine but other than that I just love this casting it's it really couldn't be better it's such an authentic size for the type of car that it is compared to other 164 scale cars and next to it we've got this Johnny Lightning uh, Camaro, so you can see, pretty pretty good size representation there. I, you know, there's been some complaints I've seen from some collectors about the, uh, the width of the tires on the bottoms of these cars. To me, I think it's fantastic that they're actually the proper uh, scale for, for this type of car. These cars actually do have fairly thin tires on them compared to the overall width and stance of the vehicle uh, I know because I've I've had one of these cars or one very similar to it and uh, certainly by no means has 
it does not have wide tires on it so these are just uh, street cars not not dragsters or high performance cars where you might expect to see those thicker tires so anywho that's just my little two cents on uh, the tires for the auto worlds so we're also going to look at some hot wheels here got a couple cars I opened up there just recently the Lexus and a Mercedes these are from the blue card years collector cars um, oh, better look at those Johnny Lightnings. I did say I was going to open these on camera. My battery died part way through the video, so here they are. They're open now, anyways, and uh, real nice to get these cars opened up. Here's that 1940 Ford pickup with an opening hood, real heavy duty, all metal. And the Christmas ornament car. I think we saw that one in the package. Just a Maybe that was in the first video. And it wasn't a suction cup that uh, holds it up. It's actually like a clip that goes through the uh, the front windows. So then you could hang it on your Christmas tree if you want. And we've got the tow truck here. The Johnny Lightning Ford F-250 tow truck. This is a really rare piece. Very difficult to find and usually rather pricey. So I finally jumped pulled the trigger on this one so to speak really wanted this one in my collection for a long time I always collect the big trucks whether they're M2 or green light and I'm a little behind in the game for collecting some of the Johnny Lightnings seeing that they're out of business now but I finally uh, finally got that truck <clears throat> and I did show you the two chrome versions there in the previous video so we'll skip just past those ones but there they are again we did want to have a closer look at this Racing Champs, Racing Champions Ford F-250. It's the same exact truck as the Johnny Lightning truck. And uh, it looks like the casting is the same too. To me anyways, it looks almost identical. So I'm wondering if perhaps... Perhaps I'm not aware of it, but that uh, Racing Champions might be a subsidiary of Johnny Lightnings or the other way around. The uh, likeness is uncanny. They both have opening hoods. They both have the same chrome pieces on the front, same wheels, exact same scale. So, you tell me, if you know more about Racing Champions and Johnny Lightning, well, I would, I would be uh, thrilled to find out about that. So I was thinking about opening this truck, but maybe until I find out a little bit more about it, I'll just keep it on the package and uh, do a little bit of research on it before I go and toss the packaging away, which is probably what I'll end up doing at some point. So we'll move along into the, uh, the Hot Wheels here. Let's go right to the noteworthy ones. Here's the uh, Caribou from 1974. I got this car all the way from Japan and it's got the black wall wheels even though the Japanese style matchbox uh, art shows it having red lines. The only other time I've seen this car with black walls was on the old Hot Wheels Collectors.com website back when they had the uh, that whole checklist of cars you could search through. It's not there anymore. At least it's not uh, updated. And they've since removed all the pictures. But uh, I did I did have that one on my radar all the way since back when that website was around and, and active. So finally found it with black walls. Really wasn't expecting that to ever happen. And also found this steamroller. Or is this the American Victory? Oh, this is a steamroller, pretty sure. Anyways, it's uh, this would be a 1973 version, I believe, because it's got the chrome plastic base and uh, red lines. So it's got a chrome plastic interior as well. But this car would normally have been found with a metal base and metal interior. And it didn't get the chrome base till I think, 75 or so. So... Some people have told me that this is a prototype or pre-production. I've only ever seen it once before and uh, for sale online. 
So I was pretty keen to pick that car up. I, I did have to shell out a hundred bucks for it, but I've never never seen it really other than that one other time on eBay when it was four times that price. So kind of a cool piece. Uh, let's let's keep going with the rare cars. This is a Blackwell version with the metal base, absolutely dead mint of the uh, Letter Getter or US mail van. Pretty cool. Still on the hunt for a redline version of that van. And uh, but they're often faked or they're just not in very good condition. The one I did see that sold from a trusted seller sold for five hundred dollars, so quite a bit out of my price range really for just a a letter getter, or at least it was at that time. However, I have a story to share with you guys about this very topic. So, and this is from a trusted seller too. I, I'm not going to name names because I, it's kind of my own fault. I already left the feedback, positive feedback, and didn't realize till after. But this teetotaler here has red line wheels, extremely rare, hard to find vehicle, or so I thought. I do not believe this is actually an authentic teetotaler, and I shelled out big money for this car. So I'm pretty upset about it, but uh, it took me a while to really figure it out. Because uh, I did all the uh, all the things that you normally check. You check the uh, axle pin heads to make sure they're the correct ones and it's not a reproduction axle. Uh, check the rivets, of course. That was the first thing I checked. And no issues there. The wheel condition matches the condition of the vehicle, which is very good. All in all, you would think this thing is probably, is probably the real deal. And that's what I thought for the first couple days I owned it. But the more I look at it, the more I think that it is not the real deal. And it's just because these wheels are far too loose. These wheels should not be so loose and so worn out on this teetotaler, considering the condition it's in. And also, those little uh, bump stops on the bottom of the, uh, of the chassis that keep your wheels from bottoming out when you press really hard on it, as a kid often does, they show no signs of wear even though this car can barely roll well it's rolling there but that back wheel locks up as you can see if you look at my other Blackwall teetotaler which is in the same great condition there's no issues with the rolling so this one does not roll so well so all to say uh, pretty disappointed about that Spent way too much money for uh, reproduction, that's for sure. Pretty sickening, actually. But oh well, that stuff happens, and uh, I've been collecting long enough. It was bound to happen. I got duped. Maybe the seller doesn't really realize either, or at least that's probably what he would tell me. But the uh, point of the matter is, is, I trust them too much, left the positive feedback, and found out afterwards that I had uh, what appears to be a fake. So, I must move on. And moving on we shall. We've got a Blackwell AOK -okay here. Real nice condition. I'm still looking for the real rider version of this car, which the seller that I bought that uh, teetotaler from also had. Thank God I didn't buy that off him. Who knows, that might have been fake too. I did give him a three-bill a three bill offer on it, which he turned down because he wanted four bills. But uh, that's just a little too, too much for me. Uh, speed machines, these are called the bubble gunners. 1983 release is the only time that speed machines were produced. They're kind of like a discount uh, car with plastic bases or metal tops. But they've since become very collectible and pretty hard to come by, especially in great shape. So this bubble gunner comes in three variations. This is the chrome motor uh, black base variation. Here we have the red motor black base variation. And I also have the red motor dark brown base variation, which is the hardest to find. Although mine is not in nearly as good of condition as those, those two right there. Still pretty difficult pieces to find. So, uh, Finishing off the Hot Wheels this month, I did get uh, a couple more real riders for my collection, including the uh, Dream Van which has got a cool little uh, opening door on it. It's like a Gullwing 
gullwing door on the side of it. There we go. And the uh, the byway man without the toolboxes in the back. So I'll go into more detail on what that's all about in another video. If you don't know about the toolbox, non-toolbox variation of the byway man. Pretty cool little variation I got for these uh, Murata stalkers. I did have a Malaysia base and I found a Hong Kong base so this car is not normally found with that Hong Kong base it's the last recolor of the Murata Stalker for the North American market and most of them have a Malaysia base so that's pretty cool <clears throat> alright we were supposed to look at a lockup and see how that works out too got the lockup car here gotta get that out of the way because I've been talking about that in two videos already so here's the lockup set this camera up it's got uh, opening doors you can see really nice little car it's a fox fox body style Mustang and it's got the rubber tires on it rolls really good it's even got some suspension to it some good quality paint jobs very authentic uh, the scale is pretty good and the lockup part is you get this key and you put it in the bottom of the car and you can actually lock it. I don't know if you saw that, but you can see that there's those green those green little tabs engage oops engage all the wheels. And uh, the wheels have little mesh gears on them. So now try as you might those wheels are not going to turn on that car it's just getting pushed along and the other thing is too you can't get the doors open there's little tabs that actually lock the doors from the inside and uh, the only way you're getting that door open is if you break the uh, tab on the inside so to get those doors open you got to unlock her you can actually hear an audible click as you do that and now it rolls a whole bunch easier again So I love these cars. I grew up with one as a child. It was actually this Mustang too, and mine got so beat up, repainted about three times with testers, uh, lost all of its tires, broke off both of its doors, and uh, it's just a piece of junk. So real cool to have that back in my collection. I don't remember if my original one was the silver or the gray one. I only remember it as being covered in a thick goo of blue and white testers paint. So. That's pretty cool. That was the lockup. And if you lose the key, you can always use like a toothpick pretty much. It's not a not a real fancy key. Couple nice little uh racing champion stock cars here, 50th anniversary for something or another. The seller that uh sold me that fake teetotaler threw these in as a nice little surprise gift. Maybe to ease my pain once I found out. <laughs> Anywho, mighty nice of them. Um, yeah, well, I was going to show you some more stuff, but this video is getting on already. Parking plates, going to have to wait for the next video. This is now like the uh, series for the December haul. M2 green light, going to have to wait till the very next video. Because i got to add all the M2 stuff that I just bought in that big huge box to that video. So, yeah, got to clear the table. Get ready for episode four of the December haul. And I got three more slips today in the mail. Got to go pick those up from the post office. Goodness gracious. This is just crazy.